Gladiators are cool, but lion gladiators are better? Are they better? I don't know. They're basically the same thing. So what does this thing do? It has high HP. It has respectable physical attack, like above average physical attack. Low accuracy. Low evasion. A little bit of crits, a little bit of guard. And really bad initiative. Now, Morard, Morard has Keen Keen, which I don't think is really the best thing for this class because Gladiator typically gets hit and then heals or gets healed and then wants to whack things for damage. So really it wants accuracy and damage and tanking. Those are the things it wants. So if you want to hand mirror this dude, if you want to run this guy, I kind of recommend running like more tanking or just more raw damage. Now you can go for crits, but getting slight crit rate at the cost of every other stat is not really the best thing, personally, in my opinion. All right, what does this thing do? So just like with Gladiator, it recommends you pair them with Clerics. It is an Axe, Infantry, Bistral, six stamina, 80 mobility, uh, can break gates and barricades more easily. And also mobility increases at night. So as a party leader, I kind of don't recommend this as a party leader unless you are doing like itemless and valorless, like no items, no valor skills, and you need to break a gate and you're running this, you can switch to it temporarily. You can use like valor points to do so, assuming you're not using valor skills. Uh, but beyond that, making it the party leader, there's way better things. Like almost anything is better than this as party leader. There are so many things that are much faster and that also have six stamina. Uh, so I do not recommend making it your party leader. Now, the attacks are actually very simple. Just like Berserker, I think it's called, the advanced form of Gladiator, you have just like a few attacks. So you have Wide Smash, which has 150 potency, 80% hit rate. The 80% hit rate's important because it's lower than most attacks. So you might notice this misses more often because it's 20 less hit than most attacks. Adds 50% potency if you're at 100% HP. Now, the problem with this, getting that 100% HP, if you get magic assisted, range assisted, if you just get hit first and you get healed, but you don't get healed the full, all of these things typically prevent this from getting that extra potency out. Now, it still is possible to hit 100% potency or 100% health, so you get 200 uh, base potency for this attack. But just keep in mind that a lot of things are going to be messing with that, and these innately have low initiative. So they're going to be not getting their attacks off as often as you would like, or as quickly as you would like, rather. And the ideal situation is that it just smacks things immediately for good accuracy. And there are, there are builds, and I'll show some examples of things you could run to get this going. Uh, but just keep it in mind that typically it's going to take some damage and not be at max HP. And if you want it to be at max HP, you're going to have to have a second unit keeping it at max HP, which is a resource, right? It's not free. Uh, then you have Mounting Charge, restore 30% HP to the user, grants the user 30% attack. So this is kind of like a slow build skill, where instead of attacking for a turn, you would heal yourself and then build up your attack. Now, I feel like these skills are too slow. Like, you can, you can beat enemy groups with them, but I feel like they're too slow. Like, using a low initiative things active thing to give itself a buff just doesn't feel uh, very logical, <laughs> but... If you can combo this with like impetus or something, you could get away with running it for a damage boost and then into like a wide smash. But generally you're gonna wanna have something else damage boost you, maybe like a dancer's call or something like that. So I don't really value this too much, but it could be okay. Or even just to restore 30% of eight, like HP at the end of battle, if you don't have healers or if you have like limited healing in a group, that could be decent. Uh, grand smash, attack all enemies. Under potency, 80% hit rates, so two 80% hit rate attacks. Very important to call that out because it does miss more than other things. Uh, 100 potency plus 50 potency if user is at 100% HP. Ranged and ground based, so it just says range because it hits everything. Ground based means that flying things cannot get hit by this. That simply does nothing to them. So it is a it is an instant board nuke for potentially 150 potency, which is valuable. Uh, but it is ineffective against flyers so there are a lot of flying enemies like late game in the angel area and for the final mission in some of the final areas so against those it'll do literally nothing so you just have to be mindful of that and then we have bulk up which is the standard like gladiator ability recover 40 percent hp after being hit 
So I don't really know that I like the game plan of getting hit and then wasting your passive point to just get unhit. There's a lot of frontline avoid tanks that just skip the part where they get hit <laughs> and then just get to use their passive point for like offense or other things. Uh, but this is here. <laughs> Wide counter. This I actually do like. Uh, attack to, or after enemy attacks with an active skill, counter attack a row. So a row counter with 100 potency, 75 hit. So if you hit fix this dude, or any berserker for that matter, and you wide counter, you're like you're getting attacked. 100 potency row attack is not bad for a counter attack. That could kill some weak enemies or at the very least put them in like half health. So that's some decent value. A berserk activates before attacking with active skill. Consume all passive points. All passive points to grant the user plus one AP. This will consume, or this the user will survive one lethal blow. Now the nice thing about this is you could just set it so that you only do this late into a fight and you just use this on your last passive point. So you don't have to worry about wasting all of your passive points. It's like those cards in Pokemon where it's like shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw five cards. If you have seven cards in hand, you don't do that. <laughs> you wait until you have like three or less or no cards and then you shuffle nothing and then just draw five cards. That's how you want to use this, I would say. All right, and then we have toughness and you get stamina loss at the end of battle. Uh, knock back enemy unit after battle so it knocks them back even if they win and negating stamina loss is actually decent and it lasts for two battles so this can be nice for like stamina conservation for pushing and it is cheap now i do wish it gave something more like um some kind of damage reduction or like maybe like increased health for two battles like plus 10 percent or plus 20 percent health or defense or something like that uh, but it's okay for how cheap it is. It basically gives you two extra stamina. So it doesn't recover the stamina, but if you're sitting at one stamina and you pop this, you're not going to go down to zero for two more battles. So at the at like after the two battles are up, then you'll hit zero stamina and you're following uh, thing. And before we go into loadouts, I'd like to ask everyone to subscribe. I'm gonna try interjecting that into the middle of videos. All right, <laughs> all right, so let's continue. Okay. Golden Ram Axe. Let's go over weapons first. Uh, this build is kind of wonky. I'm just doing this because it's funny, but I'll show you actually useful things. All right. So first, let's look at the axes. Uh, this weapon, the Sacral Axe, heal 20% when using active skill. When using active skill. This is very good, too, because it combos into both Wide Smash and Grand Smash, because it heals you before you attack, so it can get you that extra potency. So this is very good. Uh, where do you get this? I think it's from, I'm pretty sure it's from the monuments. You have to get the owl chick in Bastoria or whatever it's called, Bastorius. And she can unlock these like tombs and then you can battle dudes and get items. I'm pretty sure that's this is one of them. Uh, this weapon of course is always good, especially if you forge it. You're looking at 25 might forged, plus five to all stats. So plus five hit, which is desperately needed. Uh, more damage, more defensive stats. You get more initiative as well. You can't tell I'm getting more initiative because I'm using the prisoners and the daemon shackles. Uh, but I'll go into why I'm using those in a second because there's a potential decent build there. Uh, but this is a great axe. Uh, this thing, initiative plus five, guard rate plus 20%. You can go for guarding if you want to like mitigate the damage. So you'll still get hit and take damage, but if you block it, you'll take less. You could also go for evasion tanking if that's the thing you want to go for. Uh, but initiative plus five and decent attack is fine. Uh, Giant's Great Axe. This thing is good. It gives you more health, and it gives you access to a row stun with improved accuracy over this thing's kit, but for less damage. So you get more accuracy and a stun, less damage, and it costs you 2 AP instead of 1 versus uh, Wide Smash. Now, Grand Smash, which is a board nuke that also does not stun and does not hit flyers, also costs 2 AP. So it's, it's decent. Um, you'd want to hit fix it, or I'm sorry, it, uh, initiative fix it <laughs> so you can actually hit before things die from your other teammates um, execution this thing is just good for the base stats magic defense minus 10 isn't really the best um, attack a single enemy inflict passive seal inflict death blow this could be situationally useful for hitting like bosses or something but i don't really recommend it provoking this can be okay icy crush can be okay basic crush can be okay not a ruin this is gonna get you killed basically it gives you an active point, but it also kills your initiative and your health, which is not something this class wants. 
And then what else? Dragon Axe, no, Vorpal. Vorpal Axe is fine. Plus five HP, plus three initiative, decent stats. If you don't have a good axe to hand this, this is a fine, like, placeholder. Same thing with Karnat. These are just, like, generic and black iron. These are, like, generic axes. You can just hand something so they have something to use. And then Thorn Axe, I do not recommend. But if you want the passive point, maybe you don't care if you lose a little bit of health. All right. So the idea behind this build, which I would rather be wide smashing. The idea behind this build is that we use these to get 25% less damage taken because we're planning on getting hit, which is a stupid idea. Now this team comp is not the team comp you'd run this on. You'd have like some kind of support healer. These things are not the best healers, uh, but you basically would be planning on taking damage and you reduce it directly. Um, and then you use Lionheart to give you accuracy, use this to give accuracy, and then you wide smash twice. And you could give it a boost or something, like some kind of conferral. It's very bare bones and simple. But let's say we want to make something more competitive. Uh, let's run this. Sacral Axe. Now we have max damage, affliction immunity, heal 20% when using active skill. And I recommend running Lion's Heart with this guy almost always, because accuracy plus 20 is huge. It also gives you some crit and physical attack. So that when you do these row attacks, they're a little bit better. So the heal keeps your wide smashes 200 potency. 20% heal is a pretty big deal, uh, especially if you're using bulk up. Now you could probably even get away with something like this. So the idea here, so let's see. I'll give him like the most ridiculous thing you can. So all right, so let's do two options. We'll do the cheaper one and the more expensive one. So the cheaper one is you just run Amethyst Pendant which gives you AP plus one, passive point plus one. And then you just run something like the counter thing. Not counter belt. The counter earrings. I should have those in this playthrough. Yeah, retaliation earrings. So here's an example of a build that gets you basically six attacks. Now you would combine this with, let's actually just run a cleric, a cleric or something. I should have one. Let's just give him a cleric. You would combine this with like a cleric, right? And the cleric would uh, quick heal. Now you don't want to always waste quick heal. This is a bad condition. You want a quick heal at the very least like this, 75% or less HP. And then of course you want the cleric to have max passive points. You should be getting a lot of sapphires in your runs. So max passive points to quick heal. And the cleric can do other things. You can also active heal. So just by running this, we should be getting huge wide smashes off and also wide counters. And for wide counter, we'll just remove the condition so we always do it. So now he front lines, he tanks, and when he attacks, he heals himself beforehand. He gets chip healed with quick heal. So he will typically not be at max health, but then when he goes in wide when he goes to wide smash, he'll heal 20%, which typically should push him into max health. And you can give him amethyst so that he gets both things, and then his retaliation earrings give him 140 base potency on wide counter. And we've also given him a slight increase in accuracy. Now, if we want to do something different, I'll show that to you. If we want to do something more aggressive, maybe, you can't go wrong with the amber lens. This thing is insane. So what does this do? You get true strike and guaranteed critical. So knowing that, this is still perfectly fine because it gives you the bonus damage. So you can get to 200 potency, true strike critical. And then of course you could give like some kind of conferral. Um, so for example, we wanted to do some big thing. We could do like flame conferral, ice conferral, whatever conferral you want really. So we could do like thunderous conferral and set that to like front line, front row. So then when he does his attack, it has good damage, it's conferred, it crits, and it also does pretty big um, like base damage. And then of course we could switch bulk up over wide counter so that we make sure we're at full HP. Uh, you could still be running wide counter here, but your hit rates, I mean, that's not bad, honestly. The sniper lens gives you plus 20 hits. So this could be more than enough, like even without Hawkeye, like just the plus 20 hit could be enough to kill it, like certain uh, instances. Now there still is the issue of initiative, right? Like this thing is not very fast. So you don't necessarily need to run Amethyst Pendant. I kind of recommend pluming these 
if you want them to actually hit fast. And I really recommend Angel Pluming them because this is the highest initiative, initiative plus 20. And then if you combine it with, let's get rid of this thing. Here, let's switch these. We do something like Cursed Swamp. Reduce enemies initiative. This really helps this class. So if we defensive curse, this reduces the enemy's defensive stats. You increase the damage of your row attacker, which in this case would be the lion. And then if you cursed swamp, it also reduces their evasion, which helps them hit them and it reduces their initiative. So if you are not running a sniper lens for the true hit, like let's say you just wanna you just wanna attack generically into them. This like 136 accuracy against evasion minus 30 enemies could be enough to hit most things. And then you also like kind of give him basically 38 initiative. Now you could also run a uh, Prince or a lane with him and both of which have rapid order, which just gives initiative plus 20. That's another thing. Or you can just double boost him so we can give him like a Raven plume and angel plume and then he's significantly faster so he can get his attacks off. So now he's 43 initiative. Now, another thing you can do is you can hand mirror him so that he actually has higher initiative at base because right now his initiative is quite low. So these are just different things, different builds. Uh, comboing into the wide smash. Now you could tailwind if you need to, but you don't need to do that probably. And then you could always just wide counter. So they can do like a counter build. They can do just like a generic wide smash build. They can go for stuns on the one ax. Uh, they can initiative fix. They can just go last. Uh, initiative fix is the most like logical and aggressive thing because you want to hit enemies before they attack you typically because you if you stun disable and kill them they can't attack you so then you don't have to deal with them whereas if you let them hit you a bunch of times they might start doing annoying things like debuffing you shutting you down killing your units and typically you want to be the first one to draw and the first one to fire in this game so I do think this build, this is probably one of the more competitive builds. You get the heal, uh, you have the bulk up or the wide counter, you get spot healed by this. Now, another thing that's nice are the Elven Sisters because their heal activates after ally is hit by an attack, restore minor HP, remove all their debuffs. Their heal combos very well with attacking units, especially attacking units that are being debuffed or if their enemy shaman's present. And also it's just nice to pull like burn and poison off of things so you don't have to deal with those conditions. So these are typically much better. But then the issue is these classes, the two elven sisters are so good that their damage output will eclipse this thing significantly and you're better off conferring these. But if you wanna run this and you really like it, you can run like stuff like this and it'll be decent. It'll kill rows of enemies, and it has a reasonably decent attack if you can be at full health and accurately hit, which with a Shaman giving evasion minus 30 on everything, plus running weapons that improve hit. So this weapon does not improve hits. You can run a weapon that improves hit. Uh, Lionheart, I would say, is almost guaranteed, or not guaranteed, recommended, highly recommended. Hit plus 20, this thing needs it badly. It has lower hit rate than most things. So its attack is also less accurate than most things. So it's already hit minus 20 with low accuracy. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Find this useful. I'll see you next one. Peace.